So this is it, these two lines. You take all the dogs and cats, then you hand it over to the algorithm and you indicate in which column are the values you have to train against. Uh, where is the result value? Or as people call it, the label, you know? Is it a dog or is it a cat? And this will train a model and the algorithm will as well return to you uh, some form of report that indicates how good the trained model is. That's it. There is more to it though. You can change the algorithm and you can give transformers to transform the data. This is optional, but you can do it. To get more details and more information, yeah, keep watching. Let's get right into it. So I created this beautiful index for you guys, okay? So we start first with classification. We're gonna look a little bit closer at it. It's basically what I just showed, but I'm gonna show some more details, yeah? So basically classification is, is it a dog or is it a cat? And the other uh, topics we're gonna discuss is like regression. What is regression? Imagine, let's talk about apartments. Given, you know, a number of rooms or square meters or rooms and square meters and other things, what should the price be? You can see the price is, a, as they call it, continuous value. It's not a category. This is a category. Is it a dog or a cat? There's two categories. It's not like you can be a little bit dog and a little bit cat at the same time. It's not a spectrum, right? But with a price is a spectrum and that's what we use regression for. And we have clusters. Basically, find me similar apartments given the amount of rooms, the location, the square meters, the price, you know. You can use a cluster for that. And last but not least, anomaly detection. Sounds like in the beginning I was like, uh, I don't really care. But I found out it's actually pretty good because you can, you have data and someone made typos and you want to exclude this data from training. You want to find as well abnormal user behavior, say, to find robots or you know, just to support your user when they make a mistake, you can automatically detect those. So like animal detection could be even the most important one, actually. Okay, but let's back to classification and let's get into that. Okay, let's create a new Laravel project. And you can use this library not only for Laravel, you can use it as well without Laravel, this because there's a base base library that you can use for normal PHP projects and a wrapper around this library to use it with Laravel, which is the one that we're gonna use right now. So this is the project. Let's copy this and we require this. Okay, so what I'm gonna add is actually I'm gonna add the models we're gonna use. Yeah, and the dogs and cats, right? <laughs> well, while you're not looking, I'm gonna add them. So I added the model. What I usually do is I create, now I create um, a unit test. Because if you, you know, play, have fun with code, you might as well write it as unit test. Voila. <clears throat> so we're gonna uh, first things first always remove this not sure why they always keep it like that so now we're gonna <laughs> okay I have bad news for you it's not dogs and cats I wish it was but it's not it's actually type of flowers okay I was <laughs> not being completely honest with you <gasps> how dare I Okay, we're gonna classify flowers based on their basically what this is sepal and petal. This is you know the width and length of the flowers of the of the flower. I'm not sure how you call it, the leaves of the flower head. And you can distinguish 
what type of flower it is. The reason we're not using dogs and cats is because we want something that trains quickly. By the way, I load the flower data for a CSV file. So these are the, the widths and lengths. And here's the label. So what type of flower it is. You can see there's three, four, three different kinds of flowers. Virginica, Versicolor, and Setosa, yeah? This is our, instead of dog and cat, yeah? It's not dog and cat, it's Setosa and Versicolor. Okay, sorry to disappoint you, no. I, I, I love dog and cats, okay? This is what we're working with here. So let's get this all. Oh, I'm sorry. Presentation. Uh, this is a little bit improvised, huh? So bear with me, but I think it's good value for you. So report close. Now we're going to use the facade. Facade. Chain. All flowers, and we have to tell them where is the where is the thingy that explains what type of flower it is. And is this iris plant type? Is this a string? And let's see what that gives us. I think it's test, right? Okay, and it gives us these values. Oh, what's that? Basically, you can see they're fairly similar. Basically, they indicate how good is the model that we trained. We trained the model here. This is doing something. Yeah, it's trying to find the, a good, good solution for this data set. And this is actually giving us an indication that it's like 90%, 90 something percent good. What does MCC informedness and F beta actually mean? For that, for that, we go to the page of the creator of this library. Well, not well the library that I use under the hood. I created a wrapper for his library. He's a really nice dude, by the way. He's on Telegram. Um, so, what you probably want to look at, you can look at some examples. But the user guide is where it's at. And um, I think cross validation is where he talks about the metrics here. We have F beta informedness MCC. So true positive divided by true positive plus false positive. So basically, like accuracy would be how good it is. Uh, well, how many you got right and how many you got wrong. Yeah, that's what it indicates. And the other ones are a little bit more sophisticated, but you can read about them here if you want. But we're, we're gonna keep this video short, huh? So given that, so we train something, what does that mean? Do we, where's, what, what did we train? Well, we trained something here in storage. No. So there it is in the storage folder we have the ai rubik's model here's a model trained rbx file which is the thing you learned well the thing the algorithm created when calling this function so we can you only need to train once and it stores the trained model in this file you can change where it stores the file yeah so you can train different oh, model file name still getting used to this presentation well file name what's it complaining about wrong php version registered okay we change it so it's happy now 
So we can change it to something else and run again. And it's training a different model. And we, we're going to use, you can use this, these models. You just need one to start with, right? Let's delete this. To train and then you can use it to predict as well because this is currently just training and testing it, it does testing as well so can we actually predict something let's see so we're here where's the csv file let's take some examples like let's take this one or maybe this one Virginica and Versicolor is what we got. Oh, actually, let's create a different test can predict. Let's actually turn this into a functioning test. Okay. Need to then. It's a good thing about unit tests. You, you write a little unit test with your code and then you turn it into actually a functioning test. So we expect it higher, greater than 0 0.8 in import MCC. So this is, is very documents a little bit what we expect. So can we predict? So I paste the, the values I copied before, and now I'm gonna call predict. You can see by the way, it's just this one, two, three, four, it's five, five functions. It's not too wild, yeah? Predict, predict and train is what you want to use, predict me. Predictions, yeah, let's call it results. And we don't want to need to run this at the moment. Oh, undefined variable. Versicolor Virginica. I think this is correct. <laughs> if I don't Do I remember Versicolor Virginica. Is it the right order? Versicolor. Yes. So this works. Da, da, da. Can we can we manipulate the data a little bit and it's still gonna work? So we say versicolor. Virginica. So we change this tool, let's change this one. I don't know how much I can change. I haven't tried this. Still works, yeah? So it does not need to be exactly what it was to still work. Let's see how far we can go. What if I put a three here? So it's still gonna, still gonna find it. What about 13? This is probably, ah, now it changed. Like now it doesn't find it anymore. If this gets too small, it thinks it's the versicolor. Okay, interesting. So, and we turn this again into a functioning test. Um, I will say so. True. results zero. Where's the color? Does it run? No. Why not? Can be printed as saying that this is almost true. <clears throat> I should not have been so lazy. Okay, I just wanted to do it quickly. 
when it stops working. Let's see which one is wrong. That works. Well, okay, so it works. Um, that's it to classification. So you can go. So you we we trained the model. We predicted the results, and we got the right thing. What else? Uh, can you dive deeper into this? Yes. Um, I'm gonna make it in a separate video. This is already too long. See you later.